All right, Mark Foster, how you doing, mate? I'm doing very, very well, thank you. Good to see you, mate. Very good to see you. It's been, I'm going to say, it's been a long time. It has, mate. Um, you are one of the legends of the sport. Um, many, many years at the highest level. Uh, one of those guys that were just, everyone was chasing, everyone was trying to beat. And, uh, <laughs> and then now it's good to be able to watch you on TV. You're over there and uh, working on the broadcast team for the ISL, right? Yeah, no, it's, well, I think, first of all, I, I just hung around for a long time and you couldn't get rid of me. That was, that was the, that's the reason why I carried on for so long. I kind of went, what do I do next? Well, I don't know, so I'll just carry on swimming for a while. <laughs> and then when that finished, it was kind of like, like put it up, most sports people, depending on what, what you're into, it was kind of like, what do I do next? Uh, and I found myself doing the BBC broadcasting. I gave up in 2008 after Beijing. And then I started doing BBC in 2009, and I've been doing it now for the last 12 years, and uh, working on this and ISL for the last two years now. So it's been a privilege. Well, mate, you definitely found your calling. You're, you're super in, uh, interesting to listen to. I love the post-race interviews. Um, I love them a lot. I wish they, I wish they did more. Actually, why why don't they do one after every race? Um, <laughs> it depends who wins, and that might sound a little bit strange, but it depends whether if they can't speak English, I'm stuffed. Uh -huh. I, I can speak French. I can, mm. je parle français un petit peu. Mm. But when it comes to Russian, no chance. Mm. Japanese, gone. Yeah. So, uh, and they Makes do have sense. translators there, but because it's for sort of the, the let's say, American stroke global feed, having, because there's not an awful lot of time when they finish racing, as you know, it's sort of out, next race on. It just doesn't work. So, some of the time it's because of that. Other times when Caleb's finished or um, Lily or someone that's got other races coming up, they just take off and I can't get to them. Mm. And also I always say to them, look, don't worry about cutting me out. If you, if you need to swim, just go. I, I, I won't be offended. And I'll, if I can get you, I'll get you. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, I hope they're watching this and I hope they take a bit of time to do a little bit of research on who you were and your incredible career. I definitely want to, I'd love to dig into that one day, you know, more. Uh, but this is primarily about the ISL right now. So tell me your thoughts on just your, your impressions of this season. How's it going? Um, it's, it's more interesting. Um, obviously, last year was kind of, it was all brand new, but it was kind of quiet. It was easy to get your head around the format. The, 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 the schedule is the same, so to speak. But obviously, now they've got in jackpot points. Uh, the skins has changed in terms of the medley relays. Whoever wins, wins the men's and women's medley relays gets to choose the skins, which I think is a great addition because it's not just uh, freestyle skins. And you kind of know if you've, if you've got a, a Caleb, a Maladu, a Morosov, a Krummel, a Yo-Yo, um, a show stream, you, you, you're going to get all the points. So it's nice. It's, it's twisted that around an awful lot. And I think, well, I know from speaking to the coaches in particular that they look at the programme, because obviously when different teams are racing one another, there's different matchups. So some mm. of the time they might pull someone out of that event thinking, we might beat these teams, but we won't beat these teams. So we'll save that person for another event. So the strategy is coming into play an awful lot more. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to me there's uh, five kind of clear teams right now. Um, is there any one favourite that you think is really standing out right now? Like the Cali Condors look pretty good, don't they? Yeah, no, they look, they look really, really good. Cali Condors, I would say, with them with energy, I would say energy standard. Those two teams, I'd say, are pretty neck and neck. Yeah. Uh, and then just below them, I think Current, was, Current did a great job early doors yeah london as you know lost loads of aussies so that yeah. kind of hit them badly but they've picked yeah. up a few good guys as well yeah. and, I, and i was really not surprised when you look at when you look at the, the the sheet but tokyo coming on the back of their nationals they've been they've been good and also having morisov a, a really at the moment under par morisov if he if he sort of steps up and starts getting a bit quicker quicker quickly uh, they could be a bit of a danger as well. So the nice thing is anything over the next four or five weeks, is, is, well, next four weeks, as you know, swimmers can improve an awful lot. Some, I think when it comes to semis and finals, a lot of people will be resting and shaving. 
But the interesting thing this year compared to last year is that everyone's coming from a different place in terms of every country had different lockdowns over COVID. Some mm. people could get in the pool. Some people couldn't get in the pool. Some people took a little bit of time off. Um, everybody's in different stages of their training and racing at the moment. So that kind of makes it a little bit more, shall we say, un, I'm trying to think of the word, unpredictable. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I actually had dinner uh, with one of your old mates, uh, Peter Ford, uh, recently with uh, with Vlad Morozov, and and Vlad was telling uh -huh. me pretty much that, like he didn't get much swimming in, and uh, and he's looking to go over there and kind of race himself into some fitness. So he's looking at his hundreds to improve over time. He's, he feels like he's got strength and speed. So in terms of Vlad Morozov, I think we're going to see the best of him as we get further down the track. But I, but you're right, we don't see a lot of, I mean, we just don't know the japanese swimmers that well we don't see a lot of them they they tend to stay no. within their own country a lot they don't travel as much as um you know some of the europeans maybe or the americans but um man they're they're an incredible team got some talent over there yeah big time and i and i and i uh, too what i love most about the japanese swimmers is they're very um they're quiet mm -hmm. they keep themselves to themselves i think in this environment i know talking to dave salo who's head coach of Tokyo Frog Kings. Um, he's brought a bit of the, uh, with some American swimmers on the team, they've got a bit, brought a bit of an American flavour, mm -hmm. shall we say. Uh, and I know they're really getting into the sort of more team chanting. There's been a different team dynamic to it, but more than anything, and you'll get this as a swimmer, that their skills are just, to watch the Japanese swim is beautiful. It's not just... Mm. And there's nothing against it. It's not just power. It's, it's you know, they lack, let's say, the size of some of the European stroke American swimmers, but yep. they make up for it with their skills. Their skills are just perfect. Absolutely. Um, if you were swimming this, what, what would you be, what would you be bringing to this? <laughs> if you're, if you're a swimmer, you know, you, you were for many years. So if you were doing this, what would you do if, if you're in their position right now? Um, I, I'd be really excited, first of all, because I just think that swimming's been crying out for this for a number of years. Yeah. Yes, we've got the Olympics and the Worlds and all the major championships. Uh, and we had the World Cups for a number of years. And I think that kind of got a little bit tired. Yeah. Uh, and it needed something different. And I think what well, Constantine, who's the, you know, he's, he's the backer of the, he's the backer and also the, uh, he's the guy that invented this uh, ISL. Yeah. Um, it's taking swimming, it's making swimming professional. And I think for a lot of these people, they'll now see whether or ever, you know, everyone will always concentrate and focus on the Olympics because it's the Olympics. And there's any uh, amateur swimmer, as we know, that was always our, our holy grail, so to speak. But then this now is given those swimmers that are just below your superstars, the ability to earn money all year round. Uh, and as it grows, and hopefully there'll be different people, different companies around the world that will invest in each individual team. Uh, that there'll be more money up for grabs and it'll just become a more televised event. Uh, and and swimmers, this will be the future of swimming. That's, that's what I hope yeah. from a swimming perspective. If you said, what would I be swimming? I'd be doing the 53, 50 fly. And I, if I was unlucky, I'd have to do the skins. <laughs> Well, as a former swimmer and now as, as a media member, what's your advice to the current swimmers in terms of how to produce better media, uh, how to put yourself out there in the media? What, what are you guys looking for? Um, I, I try and just line people up to speak because ultimately the viewer doesn't want to hear from me. The viewer wants to hear from them. Um, and, and I know it's difficult, that, especially post-race, trying to get people trying to get their breath trying to get their thoughts and and talk about what just happened i suppose my thing is it's sort of like you know well done great race but tell me about it you know did you did you did you feel good did you feel bad could you see the other swimmers did you know what was going on uh did you have any race strategy were you going out easy coming back hard depending on what the race was i just want to hear a little bit more color from them because they're the ones that are in the water they're the ones that are feeling it they're the ones that are doing it so give us a little bit more of your take rather than, because I can give you my take. I watched it, mm. but I want to hear their, their take on it. That's what I like. And it's, yeah. as you know, you get different people that are different parts of their career. Some are very used to it. 
uh, and others aren't. So it's just, I suppose the only way to do it is, I don't know, I always try and make it a conversation like I'm having with you now. That's difficult on Paul's side, I know. But just tr like you're a guy in the pub, just, just tell me what you're feeling. Well, it's almost like as a professional athlete now, they have to prepare for these things, right? They have to prepare for the post-race interview. It's like, all right, what am I going to say? What do I want to get across? I understand mm -hmm. I'm going to be trying to catch my breath. Okay, but it's not good enough to be surprised that I've got an interview now. Like, I have to be ready to say something. I have to be ready to give the audience an insight into what just happened, how I did it. And, yeah. and, and that's what we're looking for, right? So I agree yeah. with you on that. Yeah, and, and, it, and it, it, can, it can be, I mean, clearly give me a bit about your race because that's what you've just done. And, and I found, that, you know, and I can get it out of people sometimes. I'm, I don't have an awful lot of time, but it's sort of, for some of them, this new environment you know the, the 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 loud music the flashing lights that's something completely new you know are you excited by that do you do you, do you find that a little bit unsettling is it a bit nerve-wracking is it exciting how you, you, you your team over here and i know you know it's sort of your team boxes are just on pool side so you know connect with your team tell me something about your team something about your coaches something about your teammates uh, and i and i i get a bit of that if i get a and an in an in an opening i'll try and tap into something that they're saying to me yeah what it's about when someone goes it's difficult when someone goes you go that was a good race and you won and they go yeah you go okay <laughs> yeah, it's like come on man give me something here don't leave me hanging <laughs> 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 what about in terms of what, what advice would you have for them in the bubble and in terms of what they're putting out there for you know to, to bring people in even before the competition starts social media yeah that kind of thing what do you think they should be doing um i suppose and some of them are really good you know some of them are really really good i think um shows through my nose exceptional um just posting some interesting stories from uh you know they're, they're, they're doing photo shoots they've got other stuff on they're not just swimming mm. and they have a life outside the pool so you know the, a lot of them share a lot of their life leaving up leading up to the championship not just when they're here but i guess giving people a little bit of color what it's like being a professional swimmer from day to day from training wise from competition wise a little bit behind the scenes what goes on you know in the in, and again like i say some are good what goes in the training pool before they go out i mean you, you can't give every minute of your day to it but at the same time they're way better than the stuff than me they're younger than me yeah but just try and draw in an audience and let people know when it's on what they're doing what event they're doing and yeah just give a bit of color to a bit more color to swimming yeah now you are you there from start to finish are you going all the way to the final um i'm we're two weeks in and i've got another four weeks to go oh mate well so what do you what about you what do you do in the bubble <laughs> what's happening for you <laughs> <laughs> well, we're basically the bubble is our hotel, which is let's say more of a media hotel, yeah. production hotel, and then the swimmers hotel is. I, I'm looking at an island in front of me. I'm on the R River Danube, and with a, a balcony overlooking the, the the island, Margaret Island. That's where the swimmers are on there. There's two hotels over there, um, so I'm allowed in this hotel, their hotel, the swimming pool, and then I'm not. We can't go in any restaurants. We can't go in any shop. Not like go shopping anyway, but we can't go anywhere. But those two places. So you could say it's a little bit boring, <laughs> but it's not because I get to follow my love and my passion, which is the swimming side of things. In between time, when I haven't got it, we've got a bit of time off, I go on the island, go for a walk. I, I've been gymming every day. So I think there's a pool in a hotel and a gym. And I, I, every, time I, every time I get in the pool, I think about making a comeback, Brett. <laughs> there's a few people doing that right now. We could get you back in. <laughs> Foz, don't worry I about thought that, when, when I saw Vlad swimming the first minute, I thought I could have a go at that. <laughs> no golf courses, hey? They're not letting you on the golf course? No, we're not. I think that's the safest place to be, to be honest. But no, there's, we're not allowed to do that either. Because we're not allowed in cabs, so I can't get there. Hey, that's, the food's got to be getting old too, doesn't it? Uh, eating hotel food for six weeks. It is a little bit, shall we say, beige. The food is beige. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we add a little bit of colour every now and again by, you know, we get a takeaway every now and again, just for a, a treat once a week to have a, I don't know, something a little bit normal, different, exciting. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, mate, it's great to check in with you. Uh, you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, really intri intriguing swimming. There's some great stuff going on. Loving it. Um, you no, guys are halfway through right now of, of uh, mat a match right now, right? 
Yeah, no, we're, we're, hot. we're day one of match four. Uh, Cali Condors are dominating and they, they'll win it. Um, we kind of knew that before it started, but, the, but the, the race for sort of second and third and fourth, and of course every match has points. So what the teams want to do is the top eight teams go to the semi-finals, and then there'll be two semi-finals, top four teams go to the finals. So there's, there's something for those guys to fight for. You know, New York Breakers, um, DC Trident and Iron, they're all quite tight. And that, 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 that's kind of more the story. It's those three battling out for second place. That's the, that's the exciting bit. Is there, is there anything else you think the ISL could do right now to, to improve this? Or you feel like it's uh, running on all cylinders? I think it's on the right route. Um, if I could be controversial, mm. I, <laughs> I, I, I like what they're doing. I think, I think it's, first of all, for what Constantine's doing is, is phenomenal for the sport. So I'm taking nothing away from it whatsoever. I think the format with the music, uh, the lights, the speed of it. I can see how much the swimmers love it. That comes across, so that's perfect. Um, I'd just like to see if there's going to be 10 teams and we remain at 10 teams. I don't think we need any more teams because I think you want to keep it. There's only so many swimmers in the world, let's say. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see each team being a little bit more balanced. Mm -hmm. So whether it goes to... This would probably never happen, but a draft pick. So you go 10 teams, right? You pick one, you pick one, you pick one. Next round, you can start first this time and, and, and have a draft pick. So it almost means that your top, let's call your stars of your team. Let's say there's four on each team. It, it kind of makes it a little bit more level. Yeah. Because as I say, I knew as soon as Kelly stepped up today, because we know swimming, we know how good each swimmer is. You kind of, you know that that horse has already won the race before it starts. Yeah. Is there any swimmer that's uh, jumped out of that you didn't really know that you feel like is having an incredible uh, ISL season so far? Um, I, I mean, uh, new names. I mean, I love seeing McKee win from Iceland when he, yeah. won, when he won yesterday from the breaststrokes. Mm, great swim. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah, that's not a name. And I know he trains in the States, so you've obviously, you've, you've obviously heard of him. But um, there's, you know, the odd swim like that, which stands out, and there's a few of them. I can't remember them all, trust me. Um, Gastadello, I thought was brilliant. I've yeah. seen her before, but I, I, I love some of the energy, but her, her energy when she comes to do an interview and stuff is just brilliant. And that, and that's what we need. We need that, that, that energy and that excitement and that engages people first of all. But there's been, the nice thing about this is, and I, and I said this last year that you get people that are, for me last year, and I'll pick out two Brits cause I'm British and I obviously pay a lot of attention. Freya Anderson and, and Duncan Scott last year, uh -huh. they were good. But suddenly last year with the ISL, because they were getting up and competing and hanging around the other best swimmers in the world, they became great. And, and I think that's, you get that taste when you're a new rookie on a team, you kind of, you get a piece of the action and you went, you, that you can see them go, I like this. Mm. I want more of this. Yeah. And, they, and it just raises them. And when they go home, they're more inspired, they're more engaged and they want to go faster. Totally agree, man. I think this has been fantastic. It's come at the right time. The swimmers needed this desperately right now, coming out of quarantine. Yeah. But um, uh, as a, one of the world's premier 50 freestylers in history, uh, give us one last controversial call. Who's your pick to win the 50 freestyle at the Olympics next year, mate? <laughs> it's a little early. Uh, early prediction. That was very controversial. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to say, because, because I, I'm also good mates with him and uh uh i just like a flow i just think flows yeah. just just is a man mountain and a beast now if for anyone to get past caleb it's going to be some sort of special swim so i'm gonna go with flow mate i can't disagree with you there i think it's a very good call i think flow looks incredible right now and i i'm hearing from james that he's as focused as he's ever been he's won it before he knows how to do it and like you said if there's anyone yeah. to beat caleb right now it's probably that man so gonna be a great race but um listen appreciate your time mate uh get back to it and um keep up the great work all right top man cheers buddy see you mate Thank you.